Happy Friday out there. This is Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel. It's Super Friday. Tennessee, Evansville, today, 3 o'clock. ESPN 2. Uh, it's time. It's go time. Winner of this series. Best two out of three goes to Omaha starting next week. And, um, you know, Tennessee, the overall one seed. Evansville was the four seed in the Greenville Regional. You know, pretty good baseball team, pretty good team. You could probably look around and say, you know, is this one of those teams that was underseeded where they come in as they have different uh, aspects of their team that really stand out? And that was a that was a pretty tough regional with East Carolina, Wake Forest, VCU, and of course Evansville coming out as they beat um, as they beat ECU, uh, East Carolina beat them twice. Went to the if game on Monday, had the three run home run late that won them that game, which won them the regional on it as well. But go give a quick preview on them, who we're looking at, what they're looking at. So Tennessee, I think, out of the gates facing left-handers. And I've already seen people, oh, my gosh, left-handed pitchers. Well, Tennessee that this year did go 18-5 and five against left-handed starters, 7-4 and four in SEC play. So it's not like they just lose every time they play against left-handed pitchers. And I think uh, – Ackenhausen has a lot of people scared more than anything how he does against them. But Tennessee's had their moments this year. I think they're a little better than people give them credit for against left-hand pitching. This dude's good. This dude's good. Very good to throw in tonight um, for Evansville. Let me let me get back to it. It is um, Kenton Deverman who's throwing 9-1 and one on the season, 3.81. Uh, let's see, 106 and a third innings pitched. He has struck out 81. So he's not a strikeout guy. Opponents have a 259 batting average against him. Um, you know, last weekend in game one of the regional, he went eight innings, 98 pitches. I think he gave up one run against East Carolina. Um, so, I mean, you know, here's one thing about it. You know, people are saying, well, the environment of Lindsey Nelson. I don't know that Evansville – will be that affected by the environment because, of you know, I've said it numerous times on here. That East Carolina environment is um, – it's tough, man. It's very good. It's one of the best in all of college baseball. But, uh, you know, I don't know the difference between Lindsey Nelson and, you know, East Carolina Stadium. I, I will say this, Knoxville will be rowdy, though. Knoxville will be ready for it. So, you're facing a good pitcher, 9-1, and 3.81. That ERA doesn't scare me. All right? That's uh, – you, know, you rounded up four runs per game on it. Good pitcher. Don't get me wrong on this. I think the key with Tennessee in this game tonight, number one, Chris Stamos has got to be better than he was last week. He didn't have it. Tony Vitello recognized it early and got him out. It was the right call. It was the right call against what was a pretty good Northern Kentucky lineup. I know they went to him barbecue, but that was still a pretty good lineup they faced. Stamos was grooving it. I mean, the first guy hits a home run off of him. The next guy hits a double off of him. Um, you know, I know Tony Vitello said Stamos wasn't happy against about being pulled. It was absolutely the right call. A.J. calls, he come in, put the fire out. You know, ten Tennessee then rolled from there. It took them a couple innings to get on the scoreboard. Once they did, they rolled in that game. Uh, I think the key for Tennessee tonight, of course, Stamos has got to be, give them a couple innings at least. Out of a couple good innings to come out. It's a good lineup. I'll talk about some of the lineup here in a minute. Turn it over to Causey. Let Causey do his thing. Causey's really had two bad outings this year. Georgia and Auburn back-to-back. -back. Ever since he's been coming out of the bullpen, though, uh, he's been lights out. He has been lights out on these Friday, Thursdays or Fridays, whenever it is that they've started. I have confidence in it. As long as Stamos, you know, I think Tony, we saw it last week. If he doesn't have it or something, Tony Vitello is going to get him out quick and get it to Causey. But, you know, uh, Deverman, it, it'll be a chore. Let's make no mistake about it. Tennessee's going to have to be patient tonight. They're going to be have to be patient with Deverman. Uh, walks on the season, he's only walked 20. So, you know, in 106 innings, he's walking, what, one, basically one per five innings. So I wouldn't expect him to be, walking guys tonight he he puts the ball in there to hit with it you know i've seen uh a lot of people like to do their scouting reports now whether it's whether it's web just whomever a lot of people uh like to be scouts and scouting report people now i've seen different i know a lot of people do pretty put a lot into it and stuff i've seen that this guy's 
I've seen it said this dude's stuff is not just like over the top. So uh, can Tennessee run him early? You know, if they come out or Christian Moore sets, uh, kind of sets the pace tonight. You get Burke. Can Burke go oppo with him? You know, oppo bomb. Can Billy Amick do his thing? Tennessee comes into this one with, you know, the better offense, but at the same time, you know, looking at their offense as well. Um, get back to it here. So their main guy, uh, 390, Mark Schellenberger, 390, 17 home runs, 63 RBIs. I, I know I'm going to mispronounce this one because I've not watched Evansville play. Kip uh, Fugarous, Fugarous, uh I, I totally apologize if I've butchered that. I probably have here. But 350, 20, I'm sure I will learn his name quick tonight. Cal McInnes for them, 337, four home runs. Uh, Harrison Talbert, nine home runs, 49 RBS, 301. Simon Sherry, Sherry, again, I, I've not watched them to know their uh, actual pronunciation here. 297, six home runs. He is their leadoff guy. 16 out of 16 on stolen bases. And it's um it's a team on the year they've hit 92 home runs and uh they're 54 out of 68 stealing bases. They don't steal a lot of bases, you know, they hit for decent power, 301 overall average. So it's a decent offense for sure. Good offense, some really good players on it. Tennessee's main thing, and this is what drives me nuts with them a lot of times, is they come up and challenge teams' best hitters. We saw it last weekend. Against Southern Miss, Bean challenges Southern Miss's best guy. You can't do it when, or no, it was Indiana. I'm sorry, Indiana. You cannot challenge the team's best guy. I've seen it throughout the season. I'm like, especially when these dudes are fouling it off. And I don't know how many times I've seen it. A guy fouls one down the line, just foul that's a long bomb, and they go right back to the same pitch and home run. They did it against Charlie Condon. Crazy. Best hitter in all of college baseball. You cannot challenge these guys. I mean, obviously, if the bases are loaded or you don't have anywhere to put them, you don't have any choice. But there's guys you don't let beat you. Against South Carolina a couple of weekends ago, Petri and Messina were the guys that could beat you. Well, who did Tennessee challenge? Petri and Messina. It's crazy. Don't challenge them. Don't groove to these guys that you know can hit. Um, you know, if you misplace a pitch, sure. But, you know, sometimes I know you have to hit the middle. But you don't always have to. And, um, you know, again, that's why I'm watching. I, I'm sitting here talking about it instead of watching. But, you know, that's that's kind of, you know, Evansville's a good, good hitting team. They have good pitchers. They have lefties that are pretty good. You get into their bullpen. Now, your guy tonight, 3.81. Your guy that's projected to start tomorrow, 5.81 ERA for Evansville. Um, let me find him. Shane Harris. So, no, it's not Shane Harris. It was um, Donovan Schultz, I believe it is, 5.84 ERA, 89 and a third inning, 72 strikeout. I, I, I don't know. I know Deverman will be tough tonight for sure. Um, I just don't, you know, Shane Harris, it looks like it's their main ERA got 3.63. Evansville's team ERA is 5.95, though. I'm just telling you, you know, for people that are worried and scared, I get it. You know, it's it's nerves. That's not an, a, a team ERA you want to have against arguably the best hitting team in college baseball at their own field. You know, we, we can build it up all we want. Cinderella, all this. Evansville, you know, they've been a little mouthy on social media. I've seen it's kind of pretty funny. You know, here's one thing you don't want to do against this Tennessee team. The team two years ago was pretty, um, they were pretty loud and volatile, I would say. Okay? It come back to get, when they got punched in the mouth, they couldn't handle it. This team here is pretty even kill, but make no mistake about it. When you piss them off, that's the wrong thing. Multiple teams have found that out this year. When you fired up this Tennessee team, it normally come back comes back on you at some point. This Evansville team tries to get a little mouthy and, and fired up with Tennessee. They, they don't want to do it with this bunch. My prediction weekend, when I I will not be live tomorrow tonight. By the way, uh, it, it's just it's just not going to happen. Um, we'll be live tomorrow after the game. Tomorrow's game's at eleven a.m. Eastern time. 
ESPN2 as far as I know on that one. I will be live after that. My prediction is tomorrow around 2 to 3 o'clock, whenever I go live on here, we'll be talking about going to Omaha. I expect this Tennessee team to roll this weekend. It's no disrespect towards Evansville. They're a good baseball team, but they're a number four seed. They're coming into the top team in college baseball, the number one ranked team in college baseball with one of the best offenses, with one of the best pitching staffs in all of college baseball. I expect Tennessee to roll this weekend. Tennessee tomorrow around, like I said, 2.30, 3 o'clock. I expect when I go live on here, we'll be talking about them getting ready for Omaha next weekend. It's not confident. It's not overconfidence. It's not being cocky. It's just that everything matching up. Tennessee, I think, is a better team. This team, to me, is on a mission. They played like it last weekend. I think they continue that mission this weekend in resounding fashion. I'll be back. Uh, I'm going to release a video here in a few minutes. They have a bunch of portal visitors this weekend and some pretty uh, top-notch prospects as well. I'm going to release that here just, um, just here in a few minutes. And I hope you'll check that out. But I will have a post-game recap tonight, later on tonight after the game. And then um, tomorrow, like I said, we'll be live tomorrow on that to hopefully uh, be talking about wrapping up that series. But uh, in Tennessee's favor, hopefully. But my name is Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel. I hope you have an awesome Friday and a great weekend. And last but most certainly not least, go Vols. Mm -hmm.